Hi everyone, in this video we're going to be talking about how to write intervals. Make sure you watch the first video on intervals, which gives you the background information about them and about how to identify them. Everything we do in theory, we have to be able to identify it when we see it and write it when we're prompted and also be able to hear it. But right now let's focus on writing intervals. So a couple of example questions for you. Uh, say you were given a G and asked to write a minor third above that G. Here's how you should do that. My advice would be to start with the generic interval measurement first. That is, put a note on the staff that is generically a third above the given note, and then determine if you need an accidental after that. So, generically, what is a third above G? Remember, when we're counting intervals, we always count the bottom note as one. So, G would be one, A would be two, B would be three. So, that means the answer is some kind of B. Whether or not it needs an accidental is the next thing that we're going to figure out. Get the note on the staff in the correct line or space first, counting the bottom note as one. Okay, now I want a minor third above G. What kind of B is that? Well, if you look at the chart here, this is the chart about intervals. If you're talking about unisons, fourths, fifths, or octaves, you use the chart on the left. Uh, seconds, thirds, sixths, or sevenths, the chart on the right. Always default to major or perfect intervals because those are the ones that correspond with the major scale of which we are all the most familiar. So if I want to write a minor third above G, I should first ask myself, what type of B would be the major third? Start with the major first. And a major third above G is B natural. So if a major third above G is B natural, to make the major interval minor, as you see in the chart, I need to lower it by a half step, and then it becomes minor. B lowered by a half step is B flat, so that's a minor third. The reason you should put the note on the staff in the right liner space first is it prevents you from maybe writing an A sharp or something instead, which you know, is enharmonically equivalent, but is not written the right way. Okay, number two, a major seventh above E. Get the generic measurement first. A seventh above E, counting E as one, will get D. So the answer is some kind of D. Now, since the question wants the major seventh, you don't even have to worry about raising or lowering anything. Now this is a scale question. Reframe these as scale questions as much as possible. So instead of saying, what is a major seventh above E? You could just say, what is the seventh note of the E major scale? What kind of D is the seventh note of E major? And the answer is D sharp. So that means a major seventh above E is D sharp. Diminished fifth above G. Okay, what's generically a fifth above G is going to be D. All right, default now, since we're talking about a fifth, default to what the perfect would be. Or what is the fifth note of the G major scale? In this case, it is D. It's the note we already wrote. To make a perfect interval diminish, it has to be lowered by a half step. So D becomes D flat. Okay, so to recap that, do the generic measurement first. Put the interval on the correct line or space based on the number. Put it a third up, a seventh up, whatever the question is asking for. Then determine if you need an accidental. And you might not always by using the chart of looking at the top note and seeing if it needs to be raised or lowered and have an accidental. Okay, if you want to try one, two, three, four, uh, and pause and do those, and then we can go over them. A major second above B. First, a generic second above B is going to be some kind of C. Counting B is one, C is two. So now, since it's major, we default to major and perfect, now it's a scale question. What is the second note of B major? If you know B major has five sharps, C is one of them, so the answer is C sharp. Number two, an augmented fourth above A. First, do the generic, counting A is one, gives you D. Okay, now, before we augment, think of what the perfect interval would be, the interval that corresponds to the major scale. In A major, the fourth note is D natural. So that means the perfect interval would be D natural. So to make a perfect interval augmented, it has to be raised by a half step. D raised by a half step gets you D sharp. Number three, 
a minor sixth above B flat. Do the generic interval first, the generic interval first, counting B flat as one. And even when you count, you don't even need to consider the accidental. I can just use the alphabet and numbers and count B, C, D, E, F, G. And I know I'm going to some kind of G. The answer is some kind of G. Okay, now for a minor six, I should first consider what the major six would be or what the sixth note of B flat major is. It's G natural, the note that I wrote. So in order to make that, so I'm looking at a major interval now is what that means. As I have it written, it's a major interval. To lower that by a half step, uh, to make it minor, I mean I have to lower it by a half step. So that would give me G flat. Last one, diminished third, diminished third. Okay, so do the generic first. Worry about the accidentals later. A third above any kind of C, not just C sharp, is some kind of E. Diminished third. So what would the major third above C sharp be? C sharp has all the sharps, so E sharp would be the major. To make E sharp minor, it would go down to E natural. And then to be lowered again would be E flat. Because remember, to make a major interval diminished, it has to be lowered twice. It has to be lowered twice. And in this case, we went from a sharp, lowered once to a natural, lowered again to a flat. So that's how you write these uh, going up. The problem is, sometimes you might be asked to write these intervals going down. And what that means is, the premise of the question will give you the upper note and ask you to supply the bottom note. So in a way, you're looking at the altered note and asking what kind of scale the note is based on, based on the upper note. So uh, let's look at the first example. If I want to write a major third below D, that question, again, can be reframed as a scale question saying D is the third note of what major scale? And, you know, my advice is always just memorization of all the notes of all the major scales. It makes everything go so much faster in theory. And so you would know that it's B flat, but first you might want to say, well, it's some kind of B because that's generically a third. Okay, is D natural in the B scale? No, B has five sharps. D sharp would have to be one of them. But I can't change the, the purple note, the top note, because that was the premise of the question. I have to make the alteration to what I'm doing in green. That's my work answering the question. So how do I make this a major third? Then what type of D? A D natural is in what type of B scale? Not B natural, but B flat. Second example, an augmented fifth below E sharp. Do the generic first. Maybe you'll get lucky and you won't need an accidental. A fifth below any kind of E is some kind of A. It, if it's an augmented fifth, that means that top note has already been raised by a half step from what the perfect would be. So that means the perfect fifth would be an E natural on top. So now it's a scale question. E natural, the unraised fifth note, is the fifth note of what major scale? In this case, it's A natural, so I do not need to add an accidental. A minor third, third example, a minor third below B, some kind of G, right? Thirds are always line, line, space, space. A minor third below B, what kind of accidental, if any, do I need here? Well, if B is the lowered third note, so that means before it was lowered, it was sharp. Before a natural would have been lowered, it would have been sharp. So, okay, now B sharp would, is a member of what major scale? The answer is G sharp, even though that scale really doesn't exist. But if it did, it would have all G sharps and an F double sharp in it. Okay, a couple for you to try there. Uh, put the generic in first, just like we did above, and then determine if you need accidentals. Okay, minor second below G flat. Generically, it's going to be some kind of F. If G is the lowered second note, that means before it was lowered, if it would have been a major interval, the G flat would have been just a G natural. So now all I need to ask myself is G natural is the second note of what major scale? And the answer is F. So I don't need to make any accidentals there. The F that I wrote for the generic measurement works for the whole question. A major sixth below A sharp. 
generically what's below a sixth below a is going to be some kind of c does it need an accidental reframe as a scale question since it's major i can just think a sharp is the sixth note of what major scale well it's not c for sure it would have to be c sharp because c sharp contains seven sharps and one of them is a number three down a diminished fifth from f flat diminished fifth from f flat put the generic in first some kind of b some kind of b okay if f flat is the diminished the upper note of the diminished interval that means before we made it diminished when it was perfect it was just f natural raising that up a half step okay now i can just say f natural is the fifth note of what major scale and the answer is b flat down a minor seventh from f generically is going to give me a g and now i need to know if f natural is the lowered seventh note what would it have been if it was major it would have been f sharp f sharp is the seventh note of what major scale the answer is g so it's important when you write these down that you make the alteration to the lower note to the note that you are writing like uh, the first example question or the third example or question four, I can't make, I can't add accidentals to the note that I'm given. You can't change the premise of a question. You would never in math class like say, oh, I don't want it to be a two, I want it to be a three. You can't change the question that you're given. Always make the accidental to the note you are writing. So that's how you write them down. So now if you want, here's a few kind of mix and match uh, questions. So it tells you the interval that is requested to be written and in what direction it should go. So up a minor seventh, down a diminished six, up a major third, etc. So if you want to try these examples, you can pause it and I'll give you the answers. Up a minor seventh from F, generically up a seventh from F, remember counting F as one, would give me E. I want the minor seventh, so I should think about what the major seventh is first. A major seventh above F would be E, the E that I wrote. So now I'm looking at a major seventh. How do I make it minor? Lower by a half step, in this case, natural to flat. Down a diminished sixth from C flat. That sounds like fun. First do the generic. What would it be generically? Some kind of E is down a sixth from C. Okay, if C flat is the diminished sixth, remember, going from major, down one becomes minor, down another becomes diminished. So if C flat's the diminished, that means when it was minor, we raise it up, it was just C. When it was major, it was C sharp. So now I can use that to reframe it as a scale question and say C sharp is, the mem is a member of what major scale? And the answer is just E natural. So after all that thinking, I don't have to write any accidental at all. Up a major third from A generically it's above a third above any kind of a is some kind of c now what is the third note of a major a major has three sharps of which one is c bass clef now down a major sixth from g sharp generically down a sixth is going to give me b uh, is g sharp the sixth note in b major the answer is yes, so I don't need to make any alterations. If the answer was no in that situation, I would make the alteration to the green note, the note that I'm writing. Up an augmented fifth from B flat, start generically with just some kind of F, because that's up a fifth from any kind of B. Uh, okay, and then think about what's the perfect fifth, or what's the fifth note of B flat major? That's F natural. So to make a perfect interval augmented, we raise it by a half step. That would give us f sharp so it can happen in certain instances of this to mix accidentals i have a flat and a sharp in the same interval that's fine down a minor second from a flat generically a second down would be g and let's see if a flat is the lowered second that means a natural would be the major second a natural is the second note of G. So again, no alterations needed. Okay, so there you go on writing intervals. You gotta be able to do this 
writing up where you're given the bottom note and you have to be able to do this writing down where you're given the top note. The next video about intervals um, will be about inversions and actually we can use interval inversions to help us with these writing them down questions. So make sure you watch that one and find out about inversions.